So our next speaker uh, is Simon Hodgson. Uh, if Simon struggles with the clicker, as Tim did, then I think they can own This is the second clicker, by the way. For those of you who are down the, down the web stream, second clicker we've tried. So it must be a problem with your thumbs. So if you could just <laughs> make sure your thumb is nicely and tightly screwed on before you attempt to use the clicker, and we will persevere with it. Uh, but Simon is the chief executive of Forest Enterprise England. He's held a variety of roles um, from corporate affairs, development, planning, and he's here to talk to us today about building a new public-private social organization and at this time of the day that's not easy to say in one fell swoop so welcome to the stage please Simon thank you very much and a good afternoon to all of you and good afternoon on the web stream as well I'll attempt to look in the right direction for that uh, for those looking at home uh, what I want to talk to about this afternoon is about the project that we're on with uh, the Forestry Commission, which is to set up a new organisation following the forestry row of two or three years ago. The opportunity to do that is uh, absolutely tremendous because we can take benefit of all the learning that uh, many of you have gone through. We can use best practice. We can apply our own experience to setting up this new organisation. But what I want to do is to take you through some of what we're doing, some of what we're thinking about. We're not yet fully formed. We still have legislation to go, but there is um, a, a tremendous opportunity, not only for us who are working on the project, but for society as well. And a chance, I think, to embed some of the thinking that some of you are already uh, applying in your own organisations. And it's been really interesting to see the presentation so far. So uh, I'll risk the first slide. Just as I continue, just leave you to warm those things up, just to remind you a little bit about the resource that we're talking about, which is a very significant uh, resource, the largest land holding, I think, pretty much. National Trust are coming up on the, on the rails, but I think we're still just ahead of them, but a huge and varied resource with tremendous opportunities. It's not just forestry, it's an awful lot of other things as well, but I won't run through those. You can see that we're not just talking about a commercial forestry resource, we're talking about a huge land resource with tremendous potential. Uh, unlike this clicker, there we go. Um, so what are, we, what are we doing and why are we doing it? You remember there was a large row in 2010 about uh, the self of public forests, a great uprising, uh, a reversal of policy and a long contemplation with a panel uh, led by the bishop and lots of uh, worthy grandees who contemplated on the issue and came up with an important report. But what was the characteristic about the row? The characteristic was that it was a, a very much a grassroots reaction. People felt... That, um, uh, these forests which had been acquired by the Forestry Commission were no longer, were not, weren't governments, they were their forests and they wanted something, a different future for those forests. And I think the nature of the row was, was very interesting. It was learning for us in the Forestry Commission but also for government that social media and attitudes had changed in a really important and significant way. Uh, the panel, chaired by the bishops, set, um, reviewed things for a year, went round the country, looked at things, listened to hundreds of different organisations, came up with a series of recommendations. I won't go through those, but basically said it's time to move the public forest estate on. It needs to become a proper triple bottom line organisation, one that plays its part across environment, social and economic factors. It's a lot of things that we do that, but the way in which our legislation is described does not make that the organisation that the Forestry Commission is. Uh, and so uh, after all that uh, discussion, what has arisen is an opportunity to create a new body which takes that resource on and develops it into a new organisation which really is going to offer uh, a bottom line improvement on what we do on a triple bottom line. And it's a, um, a challenge because we're trying to take an organisation which has been around for very nearly 100 years who had a very particular mission um, to reverse the thousand uh, year decline of woodland uh, in the UK and do something about it. A very clear mission driven by a national need, um, but one which over that hundred years has, has changed the nature of what we've done. What we've taken is land and planted, what we've generated is forests. What society is now looking for is more value from those forests. So that has been the problem, that has been our response, but life moves on and so we need to move on as well. There we go. 
Um, there are new challenges, of course. Um, I won't explain all those diagrams. You can work them out for yourself. You've possibly seen versions of those before. But climate change is not only a huge challenge um, to society at large, but a very significant challenge for forestry and the type of forestry. And we need an organisation which is able to adapt and, and cope with significant ch natural challenges like that, man-made natural challenges, um, but also to one that is going to offer more value to society. So we are dealing with not just society's needs for nice forests to work in, but in, in managing and creating a, an important uh, resource for the future, for the very long term. Um, and uh, as evidence, I think we've all got a version of this slide which just shows how many different things that we do. But the organisation has already become, uh, even with its current remit, which is largely forestry-based, a very broad-based organisation offering a lot of value to society in terms of recreation and leisure and employment, as well as forestry and the natural environment. So we, we're already managing a complex resource. What we don't have is the remit to turn that into an organisation that's really got triple bottom line value. And if the message that we got from uh, the public was about they want more from their forests, uh, that was the mission we had, um, currently have at the moment and have for about 20 years. This is where we're moving the organisation to and we're now in the process of... Uh, will go through in this parliament, but may not. That's still that's a, a ministerial and a political decision because we knew new legislation to create the body that will embed that triple bottom line approach. And for the time being, this is the working mission that we're on, one that embeds that triple bottom line requirement into the organisation, not just a, an organisation that's there to improve um, forests and grow more forests, but actually deliver better benefits for society um, at the same time. This is where we are working to now. So what's the new organisation? What are the characteristics? Um, that triple bottom line approach right up there. Um, the body should be publicly owned, operation independent of government. One of the characteristics of the debate is people said, government, this isn't your forest to sell off. It's our forest. So we had to try to create now a body that has the sense that people could be engaged with it. It's going to be uh, much more transparent, accountable to people at lots of different levels. It's going to be operationally independent of government. But we could only create a, a publicly accountable body by it being a public really work for us. But government is committed to creating this operationally independent body that will derive its mission much more. embed that in the, uh, in the organisation, there will be a charter so that there is a way of the public, of all our stakeholders, holding us to account in a much more visible and transparent way. And these are features which will appear in the new legislation, all being well. It will have to be based on all the good research and be evidence-based. This is not an organisation that's going to be driven by emotion. It's going to be one that's driven by science and what's important for our forests and the natural land. We're going to have new commercial freedom so that the body uh, can create not only economic value but also build and operate in society in a different way, commercially operate different, move out of a, a public funding model. And it's, it's going to be um, a, a real uh, release, I think, of potential and enterprise in the organisation and for all the commercial partners that operate with. Um, I think too quick there. Uh, that was just about buying and selling land. So the commitment government is given is, uh, given is that the estate will not be sold off. What we want is the potential to expand and develop the organisation. We're committed to developing a natural accounting, a payment for ecosystem services models, really a core part of how we're developing the new organisation. And it's been really interesting to listen to the, the um, uh, presentations so far on the social value side because that is something we've got to work a lot harder. We don't have a lot of experience in that. Even from the two presentations today, I've picked up an awful lot of areas that we can work on as well. Um, a, a key c concept and key issue that came out of the row was the sense that whereas before we had tended to look towards national organisations, uh, lobbying groups, um, bodies that had influence at the national level, what came out of the row was the 
the sense that it was local communities that really, really wanted the forest protected. They wanted their, their resource, their forest, to, be, to work for them better than it did and wanted to be much more engaged in its governance, in its management, in what happened there. That was no problem for us, but that is not written into the way that we operate at the moment. It's not driven into the way the organisation works. So a key design concept for us. And I think, um, uh, not, not unsurprisingly, um, as, as that public body, as we have learnt a lot over the 100 years of our existence, we wish to remain as an exemplar of uh, sustainable forest and land management. And I'm sure we share that uh, aspiration with uh, people like the Crown Estate uh, as well. We, we want to be at the, at the highest point of careful, sustainable land management, but all that that means in terms of adding value. Can you get there? Uh, so, uh, in, in designing the legislation, in writing the legal instruction for um, a parliamentary council to, to prepare the bill, uh, one of the issues that they're wrestling with uh, mightily is how um, we have written into the legislation the need to balance the three objectives across the organisation. Um, they, they obviously look at um, a new organisation, they look at the potential for legal challenge, for judicial review, and given that we have 285 different activities that happen on the public estate, many of them not necessarily complementary to each other, not necessarily everybody agrees with everything we do, the potential for this new organisation to get into um, uh, c conflict in terms of what it's trying to achieve on the ground is quite uh, significant. So we're having a lot of discussion, a lot of really interesting discussion with lawyers about how they describe the in importance of creating a balancing objective between those things. How do we balance the three pillars of sustainability in the new organisation? I'll just um, flick these up quickly uh, because I don't need to explain them too much. But uh, in, in designing a new organisation, this is designing um, the organisation from the ground up. We're having to look at both how it will run, how it will be governed, how we take account of that local interest, how we build in real local accountability. How does the legislation work? Forestry legislation has worked by and large for 100 years. It's been changed once or twice, but it's pretty much been around for 100 years. We're trying to do the same thing again. Forestry is a long-term business. How, uh, Treasury and government have said, you've got to make this work financially. We've got to have a sufficiently commercial model that's going to work, as well as delivering on the, the triple bottom line. Uh, we've got to ensure that we have the right kind of people to run an innovative new organisation. And we've got to keep the public engaged. We've got to retain a huge stakeholder community of support. It's amazing how many different organisations and interests we have to deal with in managing this uh, huge resource we have at the moment. Government has said, we're not going to do this legislation unless you can keep those stakeholders happy. It's quite a big challenge. So there's a huge communication challenge for us. Um, I'll just click these up as well to keep things moving. Um, the sort of objectives and how we're uh, trying to explain to us to work out ourselves and with lawyers what we're trying what we're here to do um, we're trying to encourage uh, access we're trying to encourage recreation we're trying to engage with communities we have a huge cultural heritage uh, we have as I said at the beginning on this first slide a huge amount of um, protected landscapes uh, hugely important natural capital sites national parks there's a great complexity of things that we have to take into account. All of these having to be um, conveyed to stakeholders as being important things we're going to protect, uh, conveyed to our business partners as being important uh, elements of how they take account of their business and social responsibilities with the estate, and for us, important messaging about you know, how we run the business, how we plan the business to be successful in the long term. And we'll eventually get there. Um, Treasury have said um, you've got to build a sustainable business model. This is something which they want to move and migrate away from public funding in the long term. I have no problem with that. We need a long-term plan to achieve that. It is achievable, but it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be achieved just because I say it. It's going to be achieved because we plan and government invests in it and we take a long and careful view for it. But when you're looking after forests and landscapes that are uh, I've got 600, 700 year old trees in them. You're thinking about the very long term and it's very important that in the very short political cycles in which we operate that we do un get that message um, well understood as we design the new organisation. 
We have a, uh, most of our um, income comes from trading. We have 600, 700 different businesses working with us on the estate. So at creating the right business environment for those businesses to thrive, whether they be leisure recreation businesses or timber businesses or uh, people who offer services, research, whatever it is, there's a whole range of things. We have to be also a good business partner as well and think how those businesses are going to thrive and survive on the estate as well. Uh, just uh, a few facts for you. Uh, we hope that we'll be in the Queen's speech in May this year, but it may take longer than that. So it's possible that um, we may have to wait for another parliament to get our, our legislation through. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it, I think all environment legislation tends to be uh, quite controversial. So I'm sure that there'll be a careful political judgment as to whether or not uh, government feels able to uh, risk, risk the difficulties that environmental legislation tends to raise. We hope they will, but I think it's better that this is a job done well than a job rushed. So if it isn't uh, happen, hasn't happened in this parliament, we're pretty sure that careful preparation will enable it to come through at a later stage. And if I can just click on to the end. So I'll just click up a few slides just to remind you of what it is the resource there and just leave it a few concluding points. Um, a tremendous opportunity for us uh, working with our partners to get a new organisation right for the future. Tremendous public interest. This is being done in full public gaze. With, there's no part of the process that we're involved in that we can do um, out of sight. Um, it, is very, it is a very public process. We surfaced in the row, or in the row, we surfaced a huge uh, range of interests, a huge level of concern, but a huge range of people who rely on this organisation, our organisation, to give them a living, to give them the opportunities for recreation, leisure, or all sorts of other things. So there's a huge responsibility to get this right. A huge responsibility on governments. Having um, opened up the box, so to speak, about forestry, it wants to settle this issue down for the long term. That is the commitment. But it's, in, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a difficult issue. It's a very large resource. There's a lot of pressures. There's a lot of interest. There's a lot of uh, politics around things. There's a lot of local concern. It got to a very, a very fevered debate. So there's a lot of um, risk attached to getting this right as well. And, and finally, we really want to get, it, uh, to, to get it right for society, to get it as an organisation that not only has um, the right mission and has the right legislation, but has the right body position, gives, gives society back value in the social, economic and, and, and social arenas. And that's why I think learning from what others are doing is going to be hugely important for the future. So just um, a few pictures to finish off with. Um, fabulous areas that we look after, like whole of the New Forest, all of Thetford Forest, some of our big areas, but also um, small local woodlands, so areas of uh, national iconic areas, but also woodlands that people walk in locally, and a lot of areas that are uh, just uh, valued by local communities, as well as these uh, national features. And uh, a, a resource which is increasingly being used for a whole wide range of purposes is not just uh, the one at the top, it's, it's all the other issues as well. And uh, our mission, I think, for the long term is improving the balance, getting the balance right. Thank you all very much, and thank you all on the web stream as well. <laughs>